Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co., and this is a video I haven't done in a while. This is my uh, All the Late Pledges video. I used to do these every three months. Uh, things got busy. I think it's been like six, maybe five months since I did it last. Either way, it's still going to be a regular occurrence on the channel, but they might get pushed off here and there when other videos need to be done. That's not the point. This video is 100 games. Uh, as such, we will not be spending that much time in every single game. Uh, a little bit of time, but not that much time. And it's going to be divided into two sections. First of all, timestamps down below as always, although links will not be down below. Links will be in the pinned comments. The reason for that is... 100 games with links and URLs, unless I feed everything through Bitly, is just too much text. YouTube won't let it. So look for the top pinned comments in case you want to see the uh, links regarding these videos, these games. Secondly, this video is going to be divided up into two different parts. The first 50 games are Kickstarters that have not been in one of these late pledge videos before, meaning they've, they've been covered on the channel, but they haven't been in the last vid late pledge videos. The second 50 are ones that are still open. So we're gonna have 100 total, but there are another 50 that are still open. To be frank, there are more than 50 that are still open from prior videos, but 100 games is already pushing it. I, I try to do 100 as the cutoff for the number of games I'm going to cover. If you've missed any videos, if you've missed any two back or not to backs, if you haven't been on Kickstarter, if you're just joining Kickstarter for the first time, this will give you a lot of stuff, stuff that you may have missed out on, stuff that you might be tempted by. Your safest opportunity to walk away is now. And I will make sure to take occasional breaks, not for air, air is unnecessary, but for coffee. I'm going to give you that first break, the opportunity to walk away now while I take a sip of coffee, and then we'll begin. Whew, that's good stuff. Anyways, starting off the bat, starting off the bat with Wild Ascent Levon Rising. Now, if this is anything like their, their last game, Storm Sunder, which will be featured later in this video, this will likely be open for late pledge for a while. In fact, strictly speaking, this is actually isn't open for late pledge right now. I believe the late pledge is opening very shortly according to the newest updates. But if you want to check this out, Wild Ascent Levon Rising, great game. Really enjoyed this one. Uh, it should be obvious. I'm a huge fan of it. It should be some over here. It's a 5 plus out of 5, which is tongue-in-cheek because I like the original Levon Rising and gave it a 5 out of 5. Sorry, I like the original Wild Ascent and gave it a 5 of 5, and Levon Rising just adds more story, more narrative, more streamlining to the game experience, so overall it was just a better experience. I love Wild Ascent, I'm a huge fan of the experience, uh, this one is on GameFound, available to late pledge in roughly a week or two, assuming things go on pla as planned, and yes, this will likely show up in future, uh, you know, late pledge videos that are coming up. Next up, we have a, a page that decided not to load, are we gonna have more of those? Oh, we're gonna have more of those, yay! Yay, okay, we'll see how many more of those we have. Anyways, Distilled. Distilled is going to be from Paverson Games. This is a, a, a game which you're going to be distilling alcohol, a variety of different types of alcohol, uh, starting off from vodka to moonshine to all these different opportunities. It is effectively a deck building engine to a degree. It's got elements of deck building while not being pure deck building, but it's one in which you're trying to go through multiple rounds, trying to brew the best alcohols uh, to assign them to either immediate sales or to let them, you know, sit in your distillery for longer and lar longer and earn you more points, but depriving you of money as you go through the game. Solid game, did incredibly well, first time creator, and did 8,000 backers, $549,000, that is distilled. Next up, we have another page to sign out to load, hopefully we don't have a lot of these, I actually went through all the tabs to make sure they're available, we'll have to figure that problem out later. We have Deep Water Games, Rat Queens to the Slaughter from Deep Water Games, Rat Queens to the Slaughter is an element of tower defense uh, in terms of the general theme it's going for, you're playing as these Rat Queens, which is based on an IP, based on a comic, and you're going to be trying to work together, utilize your abilities in tandem with each other as you defend the city. Uh, it looked like a solid game, not one I had the opportunity to try, but looked very compelling. From there we have GameFound, GameFound is going to be the platform, not the game, Chronicles Journal Age of Darkness Apocalypse. This, like Wild Ascent, is a new game, new campaign of an already existing game, giving you a lot more story to the experience, a lot more mixed in there. Uh, Chronicles of Jarnagar Age of Darkness continues where you left off in the original Chronicles of Jarnagar. I don't know if they have a specific, I believe they have a specific way to hop straight into the game in case you want to start from where this campaign picks up, but they're also going back, backwards compatible with the story elements, adding the extra levels of story and narrative and immersion in the actual choose your own adventure esque feel to the gameplay systems to the original original Chronicles of Jernigar as well, making the game you already have, if you already have it, a better experience, and making the game, if you're getting it, a better experience. That's Chronicles of Jernigar Age of Apocalypse, Age of Darkness Apocalypse. Another one of these. These are going to be very problematic if these continue. We'll see what happens here. 
Anyways, we have Oros. Oros uh, from ASC Games, another first time creator, 5,000 backers, $300,000 raised. And this is an incredibly interesting, well done game in which you're trying to level up all your abilities in tandem while being mindful of your points at the same time. Very solid game, got a lot of positive coverage, including for myself. I really enjoyed it. It managed to feel tactical and different and fresh all at the same time. You're basically merging together these land masses, building these, like, char charging up these volcanoes and creating these sites for your temples to be built on as you try to, you know, power up your abilities so that you can do all the things you need to do, putting people on the board, moving them around the board, doing all these things. And I have another unresponsive page warning. This is really, really not good. I don't know what's going on with my computer. We are going to continue confidently forward. From there, we have Divinus from Lucky Duck Games. Divinus from Lucky Duck Games is going to be their their legacy game. It's basically a legacy game system in which you are, well, trying to... It's got another element of tiling as well, similar to ours, but totally different to implementation. Has a lot of miniatures, lots of expansion stuff, lots of content there. But the basic idea is a legacy tiling game in which you're trying to put down tiles on the board and making decisions throughout the app that are going to have effects on the world you build. That thing you put down this round might come into play as something else next round. Along the way, you're vying for various favor in the various gods while continuing through the progression of the legacy system. Has an infinitely replayable game mode as once you're done with the legacy elements. I'm always skeptical of those. That's not going to be any different here. But this is Divinus from Lucky Duck Games. From there... We have Lords of Vala, Lords of Vala from Draco Studios, which gave you an interesting game experience in which you're basically playing as either a dragon or a prince, I believe it was. I believe it's dragons and princes, but you basically have dragons and let's just call them princes for the sake of this. Hopefully I'm right. Generals, dragons and generals, that's what it was. You're playing as dragons and generals, and you're going to take control of either a dragon or general, but it has this aspect called Dragon Bond, this idea that you can team up with the other counter thing. So if you're a general, you can team up with the dragon, vice versa, and you can kind of push that, that, that bonding upon other players. They have opportunities to escape it, but they have to try to escape it. So it has an interesting element to the game system, because once you bond, you have to work together to achieve your victory conditions, but you also are a stronger force. So you have more to more to achieve, you have to do more things, but you're working together. But that incentivizes the other players at the table to bond as well. Very interesting game, very well done, really enjoyed this one, looking forward to the final game and all the expansions they had. I believe they actually included enough expansion content to make its own dedicated game around that, but I never looked into that aspect, just the, the primary game here. Lords of Allah, Dragon Bond. From there... From there we have El Dorado, a Legend Academy. I keep saying like things like Game Found or the company when I really mean just Legend Academy, the name of the game. Legend Academy from El Dorado Games. This is one I really enjoyed, like many on this list that we'll get to. Legend Academy is a deck building, lots of things going on here. A deck building, card crafting, I guess those are the things. Deck building, card crafting, adventure game. It's a game in which you're going to be building your deck. You're going to be card crafting as well. You have sleeves, you're going to be slotting things in, and you're going on this, this adventure as you try to basically do all these things to achieve your goals. It is incredibly fun. It has a lot of powering up. It has a kind of deck building kind of similar to Too Many Bones. Too Many Bones does not have deck building, but if you look at the page in front of me, you see this little chart here. That's how you upgrade your deck. You're taking these cards based on this upgrade tree, similar to Too Many Bones. You have the slow unlock system, and the way you craft your deck, the way you craft your character, the way you gather various unlocks as you're playing the game the way you craft your cards all these things combine into giving you an engine that is a ton of fun you're gonna be cashing engine to do, to do tons of different things to score chunks of points to accomplish your objectives to take down the enemies you're not directly fighting other players but you are vying for the same objectives on the content on the landmass on the quest that you are going on really enjoy legend academy from el dorado games and looking forward to the next one from there we have iridia and the curse of the broken kickstarter link seems to be hopefully gone we'll see Aridia, the paths we dare tread from far off games. Aridia is a, an incredible system, an incredible game. Is in my you know top ten games that will enter my top ten hundred not games top 10 hundred games that will enter my top 100 is a list that I did the, a few weeks ago and Iridia was absolutely on this list. Iridia gives you the adventure of the promise of an adventure open world exploration and it very much feels open world. It very much feels that as you go through things you have choices to make. There is combat, there are choices, there are all these other elements going on there's this character building, there's an RPG element there's narrative, there's interacting with characters choosing different things, having other characters read you a story and you can interact with those characters and you can choose how to interact. Do you want to be given specific story points to follow off of or do you literally just want to ask them things? You know, hey, what do you think? Like, what, what what can you tell me about this 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 world that we're in? Well, you see, we've talked to the various Elch and Elder ones, and they've done X. You can have these kind of narrative interactions with the players in a way that actually makes RPG elements rewarding to myself, someone who doesn't typically like that level of immersion in RPG elements in games. 
But past that, the actual choices you made in the game as well were incredibly fun, incredibly thematic, a lot of aspects that just have you exploring the universe around you, interacting with things in different order, the way you go to here and then there versus going here and then there, the different order which you go with places will have different impacts on the way the world unfolds around you. Iridia really impressed me, solid one, I spent far too much time talking about it, so we're going to go on to the next one, which is Lands of Galzir from Snowdale Design. You see, that wasn't so hard, I did that correctly. Also, coffee break. Worth it. Lands of Galzir from Snowdale Design. Lands of Galzir is from Snowdale Design, who did, um, they did a few games, but the one that the most commonly known for is Dale of Merchants. Dale of Merchants. He's from, from, from them, and Dale of Merchants is a deck-building game, but Lands of Galzir is a narrative exploration game. One I didn't have the chance to, chance to play myself, but one that I have heard incredibly good things about from the people who've played it. Lots of interaction, lots of story. Not really sure if the game... A, a common point that I heard from a bunch of people is that, to a certain extent, there is a w degree of winning. There's a degree of doing better. But if you enter the game that from that approach, with that mindset, with the goal of winning, this might not be as much the game for you. Yes, you want to do well, and those things will drive how you interact with the, the universe around you, but at the same time, you want to be focusing on that degree of exploration, on that degree of seeing that universe around you, seemed incredibly, incredibly deep in the level of content it had. It's going to be, uh, I don't know if it's app generated or website generated, but it's going to have just a ton of different story points you can go through. A lot of content. This is Lands of Galzir from Snowdale Design. From there, we have Master of the Universe, Fields of Eternia from, 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 from Arkham Studios. Arkham Studios, Master of, Master of the Universe is going to be giving you the Master of the Universe IP, and it's not the only one we'll have on this list because Command did one too. But this one's focusing more on almost area control as you want around going on adventures, taking out different actions, try to build up the, the clan around you, and just dealing with different adventure points and getting various powers and abilities. It looks very intriguing. I believe I believe King of Average covered it. King of Average did cover it. I believe other channels did as well, but King of Average covered this one. I know that. Uh, miniatures look amazing, but that's going to be true for Arkham Studios across the board. Lots of expansion content, and before you get too invested, probably just as at the beginning, if you are in the US, you cannot get this directly. You'll have to get this with some sort of parcel forwarding system. This will not ship to the US, so uh, fact that in other places as well, whole thing is region locked, and that's going to be true for the command when we talk about later as well. That one ships to the US and not to other zones. Again, each one will say specific zones, just licensing issues. It's not the company's fault. It's the licensing fault. Either way, someone else's problem. But from there, we have the Edge of Darkness expansion, Emissaries of the Veil from Alderac Entertainment Group from AEG. This gave you the, the full Age of Darkness, Edge of Darkness experience, giving you everything they had until now, as well as the newest expansion. It also gave it to you at a very good price point. That price point of $189 for the all-in gameplay is incredible, especially in, especially considering the price point of the content currently available on the second-hand market or at retail. This is a very, very good price point on this game. And the game, from those who have covered it, which is not a lot, is well rated. This is one that I still kind of want to pick up, but also I'm kind of obsessed with Dead Reckoning, so I don't know how many card crafting systems I want. I want Legend Academy and this one. Maybe, maybe I'll pick up, uh, meaning Legend Academy and Dead Reckoning. Maybe I'll pick up Age of, Edge of Darkness at some point, but I need to clear through more of my unplayed games first to make it seem semi-responsible on my part. But that is Edge of Darkness, a great price to jump in on this campaign if you previously missed it. Next up, we have Laxrax, the board game shelf insert. This is not a board game. This is a shelf insert, as it seems to say. If you go through the page, you'll see whether it's one that's right for you. In general, this is offering you basically more customized storage to augment your Calyx system. These are the same people who did Box Throne, and they're now bringing this to the table this to the table instead, uh, or addition to, so if you if you want box throne, you still have box throne, if you want this instead, which is going to augment your calyx shelving, so you can have that same system, but within your existing framework, it's going to cost you a pretty penny, and so you have to be fine with that, you also have to be fine with the various weaknesses it brings to the table as well, there's going to be aspects like things like the way the cubes mount, there's, there's various, I'm not going to go into a critical analysis here, because this is way too long, but there's both positive and medium feedback around the system, and whether it does, it adds enough benefit to be worth the cost hassle, all that, but a lot of people also do very much much like it. So there's both, but this is going to be Lax Racks. From there we have Black Rose Wars Rebirth, the newest version of Black Rose Wars from Lewis, Lewis Magnus Studios, who also just announced The Breach, which is their newest game coming out. I don't know nearly enough about that one yet, but we'll talk more about it later. But Black Rose Wars Rebirth, coming from Ludus Magnus Studios, is the newest version of Black Rose Wars, offering you a thematic change to the Black Rose Wars system, where now you are rebuilding the Lodge instead of destroying the Lodge. Gameplay-wise, not a major shift over there, but just thematically different, and slight changes to the gameplay, the way it plays out. For the most part, if you like Black Rose Wars, you'll like Black Rose Wars Rebirth. If you don't like Black Rose Wars, you will not like Black Rose Wars Rebirth. If you haven't played Black Rose Wars, this is a good chance to get in on all the Kickstarter content at a good price point before it goes to the second-hand market and costs you more. That's Black Rose Wars Rebirth. 
Mythic Mischief from IV Studio. One of my favorite games of the year and a game that is still on my shelf. Down over here, I put this game on my permanent game shelf. Broken minis and all. Disclaimer, broken minis are because I have a prototype and prototype miniatures are more fragile. Your copy will hopefully not have broken minis because they should not have the same material or fragility. That all said, Mythic Mischief, broken miniatures and all is on my game shelf. It's a game I actively consider to be part of my collection. I actively pull it out and play, which is not something I can say for a lot of prototypes. I like a lot of games. I like a lot of prototypes. It still takes a lot for me to take a prototype and put it on my shelf and treat it like a game that I already own. I do it very infrequently. I do do it, but very, very infrequently because I have to love the game to be willing to put up with the non-final copy of the game, especially considering all the things I've been constantly playing and are coming in and all of that stuff. This is a side point to say that Mythic Mischief is an abstract game, an abstract game with variable player powers and a ton going on. I really enjoy this one. It's my favorite IV games by far. It's one of my favorite abstract games in my collection, rivaling TAC as my favorite abstract experiences, although this one feels less like an abstract. I did a full video on that. If you want to know what makes an abstract, I have a full video you can check that out as well. Just Google what makes an abstract by Board Game Co. It's a fun video. I think it's funny at least. Anyways, moving on to... 222 Teneris RPG 5e. This is lets you an opportunity to jump into the Teneris RPG system, as well as the fact that they also have Teneris board game content. They have both new content for the Teneris board game, as well as options to buy whatever it is you want from the Teneris system. So if this, if you've missed Teneris, if you've been completely living in the dark until now because they've had multiple, you've had four years of time to jump in the Teneris system. I think it's four years. Four years sounds right to me. Maybe it's three years. Three years of time to jump in the Teneris system. If you've missed all those opportunities, now is your chance to, well, now's your next chance. There'll probably be another chance. They seem to be heavily leaning into this one game system, which kudos to them because it, it, they're really deeping, deeply involved in themselves in the world of Teneris, miniatures and story and unlocks and dragons and all that stuff, just heavily diving into it. And that means you can still get your hands on it. Next up, we have Judgment Eternal Champions. Judgment Eternal Champions from Creature Caster, bringing you, um, uh, what's it called? A MOBA style gameplay to a degree, although seemingly without the miniatures. This is going to be a heavily, well, seemingly without the mini miniatures. When you play MOBA gameplays, you have your heroes, then you have your little minions. So not without the miniatures, without the minions. In fact, this game very much does have the miniatures. This game focuses very heavily on having high quality miniatures, unfortunately with a price point to match. So to a certain extent, this game, you have to want the miniature quality that they're bringing to the table. Otherwise, the game's going to cost a lot more in comparison to other game experiences you can get. But that said, this is uh, Judgment Eternal Champions. From there, we have Chai Tifa 2. Chai Tifa 2, a board game duel. duel. This is basically bringing you Chai, the, the game Chai, but totally different. It shares the same theme. Gameplay is totally different. This is much more of a two-player head-to-head experience. Think Seven Wonders Duel. Think uh, Paris, La Cette de Limeur. Think uh, any number of different two-player head-to-head games in that small size box that's going to fit right there on your shelf alongside those, giving you a tight worker placement-esque -esque style. It's more dice placement, I believe. Dice placement uh, in terms of trying to put your dice down, gather things you need, plant your tea, uh, get your ships that you need, ship it all off, and get all the victory points you can in Chai Tea for two. From there we have Boo Boo Boo, Boo 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 from Crafty Games, bringing you a very interesting uh, worker placement in this game as you have to place your workers in order to try to get the bonuses you need across four different regions, fifth re a fifth region if you have the expansion, all trying to build up your engine, all trying to build up the extra things that work together, trying to get more resources, trying to be able to craft those in, to make offerings, doing all these things to get as many points as possible, had a solid little engine, very great production quality, and really enjoyable game. This is one I cover for the channel and really looking forward to the final version of this game. From there we have Adventure Tactics, Adventures in Alchemy. This is the expansion to Adventure Tactics, although of course you could get the base game as well if you are so inclined to. Adventure Tactics is one of Tom Vassell's favorite games. I really enjoy it, although I was debating getting rid of it because my kids weren't asking to play it, but as on my getting rid of shelf, my daughter's like, no, I don't want you to get rid of it, so now she committed to playing with me, so I'll actually play it. To be very clear, I really like the game. I think it's an excellent game. I just It's just a game I'm going to play primarily with my kids, and so if my kids aren't playing it, it was going to leave, but my daughter did not want it to go. There's many games that go on the uh, games leaving the collection shelf, and many of them my kids do not save. This one my daughter saved, and we'll be playing through it together, finishing the story that we started together, and going through it these, some of these things are adorable. I didn't end up laugh back in this expansion for this exact reason. My kids were, my kids liked it, but weren't asking to play it. And so I wasn't sure to search if I need the extra content. If I do go through this completely, then maybe I should be late pledging this. We'll see. I'll dive into it with my daughter and let you know. Anyways, moving on from there, V Sabotage Deluxe. V Sabotage, the newest version of V Commandos. It's been renamed to V Sabotage. They had a whole IP thing. The game formerly known as V Commandos. From Triton Noir, this is the newest uh, campaign that they had around the system. They brought you Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed is a game that I like better, but it's only campaign play 
and I like the single shot aspect of the commandos, so I'm still conflicted as to what stays in my collection. I don't know. That's somebody else's problem. I mean, it's my problem. That's tomorrow Alex's problem. The commandos is giving you the newest version. They brought you the ghost expansion. I had the chance to dive into the gameplay. Really enjoyed the elements it added. It's just, I mean, if you like the commandos, it's more stuff that's good. If you don't like the commandos, maybe it would change your mind, but I'm skeptical it would do so. But if you want the miniatures, because this was their opportunity to dive into miniatures for the V Commando system, well, they did so. They brought all the miniatures to the table, so if you wanted V miniatures in V Commando, something that's been asked for by many since this game first came out, and also been not interested by many because people like the tokens, well, now you have your choice. You can play with the tokens, you can play with the miniatures, completely up to you. All the gameplay, whether with or without miniatures, is available to you. From there, we have the spill. The spill from 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 uh, Kurt Kovar from from Smirk and Dagger Games. The spill bringing you a cooperative experience in terms of work, players working together, each having their own unique ability, their each competitive advantage that they can bring to the table. As you have oil pouring out into the oceans, it's going to be a classic pandemic-style gameplay. You know, take your turns, clean up the mess, ha try to save things. Meanwhile, bad things are happening the entire time. And the question is, can you outpace the game system? Can you work together in such a way that between the between the four players, three players, how many players you're playing with, or characters you're playing with, can you take over and clean up the oceans. This is the spill from Smirk and Dagger Games. And then we have Dungeons of Infinity. Dungeon of Infinity Kingdom Cost. This is the newest kind of version and expansion of Dungeon of Infinity. Dungeon of Infinity came out a while on Kickstarter. Sky Kingdom Games picked up the game, re-deluxified things, brought you new um, new player boards, new, I believe, miniatures as well, just making the whole experience cleaned up in the general presentation of the game. Uh, I'm not sure if they made rule changes to the experience or not, or any adjustments to all that, but they brought you more content as well as a general streamlining and cleaning up of the visual aspect and bringing miniatures to the table. This is Dungeon of Infinity. 3,500 backers, $300,000 raised, did incredibly well. From there, we have Agamonia. Agamonia from, from Lot Palit. I always say that incorrectly, like many, many awards that I try on this channel. Agamonia is a really solid game. From the design of Eclipse, I, I love Agamonia. Agamonia was an excellent game that I really enjoyed diving into. It's one of those games that has constantly sat with me. Like, I have to actually, unfortunately, send this one on, so I don't have my, my prototype anymore. But this is one that I very much miss because it's one that's been on my mind since it left my collection. I got three plays in, actually, four, five plays technically, because I played two of the scenarios twice, but five plays total. They only had three, three, they only had three. Three, um, three missions I can go through. I went through all of them and I enjoy the escalating nature of them and the various story points as you go through it. The game very much does have replayability to a degree, meaning I, I did replay stuff and I enjoy them very much my second time through, although you are walking into your sec subsequent gameplays having some degree of knowledge of what went on in the first one. So still an interest in diving into things, but factor that in, replayability is there, but certainly less so than the first time. But it's very much got a story element as you wander around and, and interact with various game elements to find out what's going on. Why is that innkeeper in the corner? What is that plant and is it going to eat your head off? What is happening in this world? Still has gameplay. It's not pure story. It has gameplay as you level up your characters, as you get more abilities, as you do all the things you need to do, but it also has that story element of trying to unlock and discover the world around you. Really enjoyed this one and looking forward to the final game. And then we have the Artemis Odyssey. The Artemis Odyssey, is, which is a thematic sequel to the Artemis Project, while being an actual reprint of a different game whose name I can't remember. It's going to bother me. It's a reprint of a different game whose name I can't remember. It's a reprint of a different game whose name I can't remember, but an older game that, that I believe from Bruno Cathala, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. Bruno for duty. Bruno for duty, not Bruno Cathala. See, I always, the, the two Brunos. We don't talk about blue. No, 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 no. Still can't remember the name of the game. Anyways, the Artemis Odyssey. The Artemis Odyssey. See, Buddha Fundity. I got it correctly. The Artemis Odyssey is bringing you a gameplay as you try to go through the game. It's got phase phase but gameplay. You're going to be playing cards to activate phases that all players will benefit from, but you will get the, either the control or the advantage of being the person who played that card. So think Race for the Galaxy, that style of gameplay. But at the same time, you're exploring the galaxy, trying to place your various buildings on the board, trying to build more spaceships, trying to figure out how to exchange and trade resources with the bank, with other players, to do what you need to do in the game to get what you need done first, to get as many points as possible first. That's the Artemis project whose name the Artemis Odyssey whose name from the original game I still can't remember Soul Force Fusion, hybrid deck building game. Soul Force Fusion, designed by Richard Garfield. This is a, a computer generated deck building game designed by Richard Garfield. Has no similarity to to the other one called Soul. Hmm. Hmm, Soul Forge. Key Forge, call it Key Forge, okay? So Key Forge, Soul Forge, totally different games. I mean, they are different in the actual mechanics, but the, there's too many similarities for people to not make that comparison time and time and time again. Key Forge, I believe, went on a hiatus as they sat there to try to, fun to fundamentally fix the algorithm of how things are generated. Hopefully this won't have that problem. We'll sh we shall see. But this is Soul Forge from Richard Garfield. From there we have Relic. Relic Relics of Raj Rajabhara and Montala's Revenge expansion. I cleverly, not cleverly, I resisted the temptation, 
the first time this was on Kickstarter, the first time really I had Relics of Rajah Power, and then they had this one on Kickstarter, and I did not resist the temptation this time round. This brings you the original Relics of Rajah Power, in case you missed it, as well as bringing you the expansion on Talos Revenge, in case you want any of that, bringing you more scenarios. This is a solo game, solo puzzle game. You're presented with different puzzles and an escalating sense of unlocking new mechanics as you go through the system. So you have you have a puzzle, and then you figure out how to solve it. You have a more difficult puzzle, and you figure out how to solve that. And then 10, 10 missions later, you now have a new mechanic. So wait, so what's going on here? Suddenly we have snakes, suddenly we have ice blocks, fire blocks, all these new mechanics and elements and rules being added to make your puzzle progressively more complicated. Seems like a really fun solo puzzle. Um, more of a puzzle than a game, but still functions as a game you still win lose it's always an ever interesting discussion about what's the nature of puzzles versus games we're not going to have that today today we're going to talk about solar sphere harness the power of the stars from Dronda games solar sphere which is a dice placement game which you're going to go through multiple rounds trying to basically build out the solar sphere together with other players trying to be mindful of the different ways to build out your engine to get victory points in this game by placing down on the solar sphere by contri contributing to the building of the solar sphere from getting various cards you can have in the game from utilizing your crew in different ways to add more to what you can do from trying to power the location so you can be more progressively more powerful as you go to that location because every time you go to a location you can choose to take the action or you can choose to lock yourself in for a bonus that when you go there in the future you'll take a stronger action lots of tableau, tableau building lots of dice stuff lots of fun stuff in solar sphere from there we have this the master of the universe master of the universe from come on games this one is the clash for attorney instead of the fields for attorney and this one like i said already is available to us and other places ignore the fact that i i went all in i mean i told you i went all in but i definitely went all in on this game i didn't do this in my incognito tab the way i usually do because too many tabs to open but either way this Master of the Universe, which is giving you a one versus many gameplay. They do have a co-op mode as well, which means they also have a solo mode as well. I haven't tried those. I've only tried the one versus many, and I very much enjoy the one versus many. There's a ton of content. Way too much content. Way too many miniatures. Come on, games have gotten more and more expensive, and they were never cheap to begin with. But their last, like, IP games, I mean, these things, and then Marvel Zombies... They continuously are asking people to put a lot of money into these systems. And to be very fair, you absolutely should not get the 445 pledge if you get this. Get the $110 pledge. You'll get a ton of content, more than you'll ever need. You do not need this plastic castle. You might want the plastic castle, but you don't need the plastic castle. I I am very good at telling you the self-control you should have. I'm not as good at the self-control myself. But I also can lie to myself and justify it as, hey, I'm going to unbox in the channel, so it's totally worth it. It's part of being a content creator. It's just the price I pay. I wouldn't have done it otherwise. I, I, I would have. Anyways, moving on to Shazan Azadi. What will freedom cost? One of the better videos I've seen on a Kickstarter page. I really thought the video on this page was absolutely fantastic. As far as the general, more if you scroll down mid 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 cap page, they had like a full like cinematic video, really solid. Shazan Azadi is basically giving you an area control game that tells a story as you go through it. This is the newer version. They have the original Shazan. This is the same core system while being very different in many small aspects to it. This basically gives you more of a semi co op gameplay to it. But the general idea is, is some form of area control, some form of trying to, to politically get what you need out of the system while dealing with the degree of choice at the same time a degree of narrative aspect of something is happening how do you want to deal with it so it, it combines the thematic as, long, as well as the mechanical seems to be a very interesting system overall is well rated but it's one of those games that's interesting because the people who don't like it really don't like it so like if you look at board game geek the ratings are like very very positive but also the people who don't like it are giving it like ones and everyone else is like this is amazing and incredible so i'm very curious to see where i'll lie i have the original shazam I have to get my hands on Shazana Zadi, but either way, that is, well, this. From there, we have Three, Three, Three Tail. Three Tail from Board Area Games. Three Tail was a game that I really enjoy this one. This gives you a, a solo and three player experience. Technically, you could play it at two as well, but the solo and three player are like the primary modes of the game. But this is giving you a game where you're going to be trying to go through two aspects of the game. The first aspect has you wandering around the board, leveling up your character, leveling up your abilities, doing all the things you need to do there. And the second half of the game has the board suddenly getting progressively much, much harder. Not to say it wasn't hard to begin with, but it gets significantly harder in the second phase of the game. And so you're trying to build up so you can go through this 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 prophecy and deal with it and actually win the game very challenging very fun basically call it stat building the board game and it delivers on that promise next up we have verdant verdant from flat out games this is the third game in the trilogy of calico then cascadia then verdant uh I, for cascadia is by far my favorite to be very clear but verdant was very enjoyable at the same time and to quote my wife at least this is a game where she can keep plants alive as opposed to real life where she can't a solid game we had a full coverage both a review a playthrough a play this not that lots of coverage around the game really enjoyed this one and they've built up a following i mean 12,000 people three hundred forty-two thousand dollars there's nothing to sneeze at here from there we have quests and cannons quests and cannons from short hop games 
This is giving you uh, almost an intro gateway experience, but combining the accessibility of Catan with the 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 the, the sandboxy nature of a game like Merchants and Marauders, as you try to figure out whether you want to blow people to bits, whether you want to build up your 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 whether you want to go on quests, whether you want to try to build up your your pickup and delivery in the game. Lots of fun aspects going on in Quests and Cannons. Lots of ways to mod mitigate or choose your pathways or strategy throughout the course of the game, mainly while trying to blow up cannons at other people, trying to shoot cannons at other people, blowing them up. Then we have the Stuff of Legend from Third World Studios. The Stuff of Legend giving you a hidden trader mechanism to the gameplay based on the New York comic from uh, from the New York uh, short story, New York Times short stories book. I'm clearly well informed here. Based on something, based on an IP, but giving you a game from from, from Kevin Wilson, designer of Arkham Horror, if I'm not mistaken, designer of yeah Arkham Horror Civilization and Android and Descent. So lots of fantasy flight experience behind him. This is giving you a hidden role game as you try to figure out whether you're a toy that's helping or hurting on the search for the boy and the search for the missing boy as you go through this game and try to figure out what's the pathway how do you get out the exit how do you get out as the board works against you and you have to figure out whether there are toys working against you at the same time next up we have stefan feld city collection new york city and marrakesh it's almost as expensive as it is to buy these games as it is to buy an apartment in new york you can choose one or the other but this game system which will run you the hefty price it makes my purchase of a uh, master of the universe look reasonable the all in here will run you 690 dollars for some euro games a bunch of Euro games from Stefan Feld. Although, to be fair, I think that that Hamburg, I believe, is the one. Hamburg is the newest version of Bruges. Hamburg is a fantastic game because Bruges is a fantastic game. Marrakesh, which I had the chance to play, I really enjoyed that one. I, a solid, solid game. So I am looking forward to trying to get my hands on some of these later. New York is a re implementation of Rialto. And I thought Rialto was fine, but not as much of one of the Stefan Feld games that I love. And Amsterdam is a re implementation of Macau, which is also very solid. But to me, Bruges and Marrakesh are, well, Hamburg and Marrakesh are the highlights of this system. Both very, very solid games, and I do very much want to get my hands on Marrakesh. I only got a chance to play it once online. Really enjoyed it, though. Keep the Heroes Out from Lou, Louis Brew. I, I'm, I'm probably saying that incorrectly in terms of the name. I apologize. But Keep the Heroes Out. He has a bunch of games under his belt, and they've all done fairly well. They all have incredibly adorable art, incredibly adorable systems. The last one was called... the Not the 100 Tory. That's something else. I can't remember what the last one's called. But Keep the Heroes Out, which is his newest, newest game. I think actually covering the next one in the second half of this video. But either way, Keep the Heroes Out is a game which you're playing as dragons. It's a deck building, not dragons. It's playing as monsters. It's a deck building experience. You're each going to pick a player that plays as a different faction, a different faction of monsters, as you try to figure out how to work together to keep the heroes out. Looks adorable. Looks interesting. Has a bunch of fun stuff. Has a bunch of expansion content. It will run up the price very quickly, as far as if you want all the stuff. If you want the Cthulhu, if you want this, if you want that. But overall, looks like an adorable game, and I'm very much looking forward to diving into this one. Then we have Drop Drive. Drop Drive from Jason Maselli from the, the creators of Dungeon Drop. Drop Drive brings Dungeon Drop to space in a pick-up and deliver system as you drop things down on the board and you try to figure out the most efficient way to build up your spaceship to wander from planet to planet. I like this one significantly more than Dungeon Drop. It had a degree of tableau building that I didn't really get a feeling for from Dungeon Drop, but really solid experience as you wander through space and try to pick things up, build up your ship, pick up and deliver, and do all that and most efficiently before the game ends in 30 minutes. From there we have Tales of Tales from the Red Dragon Inn, which is basically a dungeon crawler in the universe of the tale of the red dragon inn that's as interesting as i can get with this i don't know enough about the gameplay to go into it more but if you like the red dragon inn and if you like dungeon crawlers this is basically giving you the two combined next up we have beast Beast from Studio Midhall. We're starting to branch into more and more recent Kickstarters as the nature of this would be. But Beast from Studio Midhall, late pledge is open for this one. 9,000 backers. This is an incredible experience. Rivaled only by Mind MGMT as my two favorite uh, hidden movement games. Really enjoy Beast and I cannot wait to dive back into this one. Gives you a lot of variability. And it's one of the only ones that really gives you, that gives you like so much variability as far as the Beast. You can pick different Beasts to play as, all with their own system and way and strategies of the way they'll go through the game. Meanwhile, you have your own hunters, you have different scenarios you're going on called a Assignments, I believe. No, they're called something else. But these, these, these basically scenarios you're playing through, combined with the variability of the beast, combined with the variability of the hunters, combined with the different strategies players will take, combined with the way the cards will come out, and then throw in drafting. There's a lot to love in Beast. I think it's a solid game, and I cannot wait for it to land and for the general reception. I, I, I mean, th there are times. Whenever I review or cover games, there's always that aspect where I'm like sitting there and saying, I hyped this game up and I spent a lot of time hyping it up and I, I need people to get their hands in it so they can say, yeah, okay, when Alex really likes the game, there's a reason he really likes the game. Sometimes. Other times, it's just me. Either way, Voidfall. Voidfall for Mind Clash games. Uh, Mind Clash is still a company I haven't dived into. I have an acronym. I still haven't played it. It's a problem I need to fix along with a million other problems. One thing at a time. One day at a time. Mind Clash brings you 4x to almost a Euro experience as Mind Clash dives into the 4x genre with Voidfall. Lots of positive coverage around this game, but I sadly have not played this one. 
Then we have Roll Camera Reprint and Expansion. Uh, roll, roll Camera is it's just a reprint on expansion, as it says. It's giving you a reprint of Roll Camera, as well as the B Movie expansion, giving you more stuff to do in the Roll Camera experience. This is one I had a chance to dive into. I did the gameplay of Crackalope and really enjoyed it. Uh, it's some degrees a little easier than I want it to be in some areas, although to be fair, we did get a comment in the video saying that we cheated, so, so apparently there is that. But overall, I really liked it. It's dice placement, cooperative dice placement. Uh, you have these interesting scenarios going through as you try to figure out. It's got like a degree of humor in it as you have these different options like, oh no, the director quit, what do you do? And then the players all play these cards to figure out what weird solution they're going to have to the current problem. So it's humorous, it's thematic, it's interesting. You can make a movie that's so good, you can make a movie that's so bad that it actually ends up winning. Those are the two choices. You have to be good or so bad that it becomes a cult classic like The Room. The Room is such a bad movie. Then we have Don't Go In There. Don't go in there from Road to Infamy. Don't go in there. Road to Infamy brought you, uh, famous for bringing you canvas to the table. And Road to Infamy, uh, don't go in there brings you push your luck as you try to figure out who wants to go in there because they all don't want to go in there. And once you're, you're going to kind of be reverse bidding as far as how bad the ghosts are going to be once you enter and take bonuses accordingly. So basically push your luck and reverse bidding trying to take that on. That's don't go in there. Then we have Mythwin. Mythwin from, 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 what's the name of the company? Mm, Brendan McCaskill. Can't remember the name of the company. But Mythwin is basically giving you a game that never stops being played. This is a game that, like, the premise is what it sounds like. There is no end point to this game. This is an experience you play so that you can play and you build so that you can build. And you have these asymmetric characters all have their own engine of how they're going to contribute to the building of Mythwin Valley. But at the same time, there is no end goal. There's going to be minor goals and challenges as you go through it. And for that reason, it is a game that didn't work for me because of that. I kind of need that destination and I didn't have one in Mythwind. But overall, if that doesn't scare you off, if you're not scared off by the idea of a game that has no fixed end point, then Mythwind might be for you. They're going to have asymmetric characters going to have a valley that's in building, they're going to have build, uh, buildings that all have different things, they're going to all have different abilities in them, they're going to have story points as you go through this different exploration, what's going on, what's happening in the valley, a little bit of a tie into what's going on in this universe around you, that is Mythwin. From there, we have Cranky, Cranky Chinchillas. Cranky Chinchillas. I believe that's how you say that. But either way, Cranky Chinchillas, which is giving you the universe and the stylings of a game like... Um, What's the unicorn game? Unicorn Fever. No, not Unicorn Fever. Uh, Unstable Unicorns. Uh, the world stylings of Unstable Unicorns combined with a bit of a hidden role game. Uh, that's going to be what Kankin Chillas is. Uh, they did fairly well. I mean, the games with the style of artwork seem to, and they didn't even have an IP or backing behind them. It's 1,600 backers, $150,000 raised. Uh, if you like that style of art and gameplay, this is available for you. We have Bird Watcher. Bird Watcher is going to be the Bird Watcher, the board game. Oni Press, 1,200 backers, $51,000. This is a game of set collection as you try to call the various birds to you and try to take the ta 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 uh, take get their attention so you can take photos of them either in your own trees or possibly from opponents trees it's basically set collection with a bunch of birds and a bird theme and and whistles bird whistles and kind of collecting birds and all that stuff and then we have dandelions and psychic pizza deliveries from ghost go to ghost town from board game tables four thousand backers this this name is still the best name i've ever seen in a board game psychic pizza deliverers go to the ghost town phenomenal name either way i tend to enjoy the games that board game tables brings to the table they they give you accessible games that have like two pages of rules and offer a lot of fun gameplay they have not all been hits, but they have all been fun. Some have stuck around, others have not. My favorite, by the way, my favorite is currently Ghost of Christmas. Absolutely phenomenal, and did not even expect to keep or like that one because it's trick taking, but it's so good. Either way, Dandelions is going to join their small box game series, and Psychic Peaks for Deli Pizza Deliveries Go to Ghost Town is going to join their midi medium box series. They don't really have a large box series. Board Game Tables, when are you going to start a large box series? You should add that to your repertoire. You have small, medium, and you should have large. I've, I've read Goldilocks, so you want all three sizes there. Then we have Bardward Grove. Bard Grow from Final Tier Frontier, Frontier Games. Uh, degree, I believe it had worker placement, if I'm not mistaken. I believe it had deck building, worker placement. What did it have? It had a few different mechanics. I can't remember all of them, but the general idea of it is you are playing. Here we go, deck building. Positional gameplay, deck building, yeah, not really worker placement. Tableau management, all in, in, in an effort to build out your song, to cash in on the song that you're building, which is a thematic, interesting uh, choice that isn't seen often in board games that makes it stand out in and of itself. Art looks phenomenal, as I'd expect from the Mitcho, and it's Final Frontier Games. They're almost certainly putting out a game that ranges somewhere from good to great. The question is where Bar Road Grove ends up, and I'm very curious and looking forward to it. Paint the Roses, Paint the Roses from, from North Star Games this is a deduction game that I really enjoyed. Cooperative deduction as you work together to try to figure out what the best way to build the garden is. You're trying to figure out the cards in other players' hands. So you're going to be placing things down, putting different cubes on, and then trying to work together to figure out when to make guesses, when to advance the queen, how to power up in different ways. For me, the modules that you have in this game, those absolutely made the game. I highly recommend if you do get the game, get it with the key modules. Those all add a lot more gameplay to a game that I very much enjoyed, but enjoyed it much more with the key modules. From there, we have Small Railroad Empires from Arcona Games. Small Railroad Empires is the, well, more specifically with the mini expansion and playmat, because this is already on Kickstarter. It's an already existing game. It's a pick-up and delivery game 
game, and it's one in which this is giving you, well, more content, playmat, deluxification, all that. Another opportunity to dive into this game in case you missed out on it. And then we have Too Many Bones, the last of the 50 games before we dive into round two. Too Many Bones, Unbreakable from Chip Theory Games, raised $3 million, and this one was, I mean, this is their most successful campaign to date by a long, long shot. Long, 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 long shot. Although, they did just drop their information on their Elder Scrolls game. A little bit of tease of information around Elder Scrolls. If you want to check that out, you can go ahead and head over to their Facebook page, where you'll see a two and a half minute video that tells you a lot and nothing at the same time. But Too Many Bones Unbreakable, let's focus on that one. Too Many Bones Unbreakable is the newest standalone version of jumping into Too Many Bones. In case you don't want to pay the full price tag for the larger one, you now have two options for your entryway. You have Undertow or you have Unbreakable, although you might still want to pick up other expansions and stuff and content because it is one of my favorite games of all time. I number seven specifically this past year. Really, really saw a game. And that brings us to our interlude. Please wait while we go ahead and... Um, Take a short break and, and head into um, a, a short break while I pull up the next 50 tabs. I'll be right back. I'll see you in a second. We're going to pull up the th next 50 tabs and, and then proceed to go through those a lot quicker because those ones we've talked about before. And we're back. Loading 50 tabs takes a lot of work. Now, like I said already, this is going to be a much quicker second half because I've already covered these in prior videos. So let's go ahead and rattle through these as quickly as we possibly can. Timestamps in the first pinned comment down below as a reminder. Not timestamps, links in the first pinned comment down below. Starting off with Storm Sunder, Urza Rune. Love Laser Squire games, but this will likely be here for a long time. They have lots of stuff over here. I, I'm looking forward to this game. We'll see what happens. Then we have Planet Unknown. Planet Unknown, another Polyomino game. Very much looking forward to it. You can still lay place for this as well everything I'm going to be talking about. Cactus Town, a game with action programming. Seems to be a lot of fun, heard good things, but I've successfully managed to resist backing it time and time again. We have Hell the Last Saga from Mythic Games, which is giving you their story narrative game, the next big one since uh, Solomon Kane. Very much looking forward to the end result when it does show up. From there, we have Nova Eidos Renaissance from Ludus Magnus, Studio game, Ludus Magnus Studios, another one that I've held strong and not backing just because of how many other campaign games I am currently not playing as it is. From there, we have another one. You have another Mythic Games, Darkest Dungeon. This one has some of the best miniatures I've seen in board games, just because, I mean, this is a Unbelievable. Mythic in general, their miniatures are off our top notch. Next up, we have Freedom 5, Sentinels Comics board game from Arcane Wonders, bringing you Sentinels of the Multiverse in a more of a tabletop presence with the superheroes. Then we have, then we have, then we have uh, our Dark Venture, Dark Venture Battle of the Ancients from Rob Lemon from, from whatever the name of the company is. Uh, this is one that I wasn't planning on backing, but I did because I heard amazing things about the general nature of the gameplay and the stories it tells as you go through it. Not like story stories, but mechanically, like uh, evolving narrative, whatever it is. Um, there's a word for it, uh, something narrative. Anyways, uh, Vindication Board Game and Chronicles. Uh, this is going to, they've also since added, by the way, in case you're like, I've already backed this, they've added a big box to the Pledge Manager. So if you want to get that, if you want to get promos, if you want to get any of this stuff, Vindication, Chronicle, Chronicles and Big Box and Promos and whatever. Darwin's Journey. Darwin's Journey is a Euro game that I've heard so many amazing good things about this one. I haven't had a chance to play this one myself, but very excited for what the actual campaign brings. Looked amazing, looked incredible, and just heard too many good things to not jump in on this myself. Next up, we have Castle Mad King Ludwig Collector's Edition, a Big Box version of Castle Mad King Ludwig, which is great, except I didn't keep Castle Mad King Ludwig. I prefer Suburbia myself. Then we have Alba, an open world adventure book giving you a choose-your-own-adventure-esque story-adjacent, board game-adjacent adventure book uh, Alba. Been out for a while, still can late pledge. Kingdom Rush Unlocked Uprising from, from Lucky Duck Games. This is the newest version of Kingdom Rush, bringing you both new gameplay, new content, new mechanics, new stuff, new heroes, new everything, as well as a big box to streamline your gameplay and accessibility from the prior campaign. Uh, so I'm very much looking forward to this one delivering. Then from there, then from there we have we have Ragnaroks from Grey Fox Games. Really enjoy this one. This one you should not be able to late pledge. No, you still can. Okay, this one is supposedly the late pledge closed on this one, but from what I've seen, you still could actually hit back now. So rush in on that, or, or it might be too late by the time you even watch this. I don't even know. Tiny Epic Dungeons from Gambling Gambling Games. This is their most funded Tiny Epic game until now, proving once again that people like dungeons. Uh, people like the gener generic fantasy hero theme. Tiny Epic Dungeons, very much looking forward to the end result on this one. Next up, we have So You've Been Eaten by Luda Creation. So You've Been Eaten, a two-player head-to-head game, which you can play as the monster, the hunter, the, di the whatever it is, the diver, there's something, there's a term for the sides, or you can play as nothing and just watch the game unfold itself. Then we have Everdell, the all-in for Everdell, like um, Edge of Darkness before that we covered early in this video. Everdell is giving you a great price point to get all-in. If you have missed this one, if you haven't played Everdell, if you want all the content at an amazing price point, the all-in on this one was an absolutely fantastic deal. A lot of money, to be very clear, you have to want this game, but a great deal in case you are someone who wants all of it. Then from there, from there we have Stellaris Infinite Legacy if the play if the page chooses to load. 
The page is not. There we go. Star Wars Infinite Legacy from Academy Games, bringing you the video game into a 4x genre with a. I don't. Know, I don't think that's something that's played. But supposedly it played in like two hours. We'll see if it actually does or not. But either way, then we have next up. We have we have Sniper Elite, the board game. The pages are now taking longer to load on these ones. My computer does not like the 50 tabs. I'm telling you, this is this is a problem. I should take these opportunities for coffee breaks. Sniper Elite the Board Game from Rebellion Unplugged. Heard good things about this one. This is another hidden movement one that I am very excited about. I'm curious whether it joins the ranks of Beast and Mind MGMT. Heard phenomenal things. I was not compelled by it initially, but I just heard too many good things after the fact that I did end up diving into it later. Then we have Neomorphosis Infestation, which is just, again, taking a long time. Neomorphosis Infestation for Dark A Games, uh, giving you cooperative gameplay in this, you know, alien ship, ship of thing majiggy yeah i have words lots of uh basically plant life infestation and stuff involving species all those stuff in this uh game from dark Age games then we have ISSS Vanguard. ISS Vanguard from Awaken Realms with all the ISS Vanguard stuff and the tons of content. You can get the base game, you can get all the things. Their newest epic long story game. Then we have Lasting Tales, a fantasy miniature game. Lasting Tales. I'm going to have to take a quick pause while I refresh these tabs. So bear with me. I'll be right back while I quickly refresh all these tabs. And done. Lasting Tales from Blacklist Games, bringing you both more and more fantasy miniatures in case you wanted that, as well as opportunities to jump in on the original Lasting Tales, as well as the actual board game around it, which is more of a miniatures game than a board game, so fact that into your decision point. Next up, we have John Company 2nd Edition. This one is, well, John Company. It's from, so from Cole Early. It's a 2nd Edition. It's a reprint, similar to what they did with Pax Premier. Well-loved, well-weighted game. Very, very, very heavy, though. Then we have 1815, Scum of the Earth from Tristan Hall. Some of the best artwork I've ever seen in the gameplay. One of those lane battler games. Very much looking forward to this one. I haven't played a lot of games from Tristan Hall, but I've heard, I mean, they're all rated incredibly well, so I'm very excited for this one. Then we have, then we have Primal the Awakening. This was open a second ago, I'm telling you. Primal the Awakening from Reggie Games. This is, is the game that, the get the game that Board Game Co. called the best thing he's played since Marvel Champions. Basically, it's what it is. It felt very similar to Marvel Champions to me, but in a boss battler feeling. Love Primal. Very much looking forward to it. Then we have Mythic Battles Ragnarok, the newest version of Mythic Battles, the first time in a long time. Then we have Hexplore, the domain of Mizzer Noctis, a game system that I have not dived into yet and don't know much about, past the fact that it's another campaign system that I I need. I need more time. I need more time. Then we have Le Legends of Void. Legends of Void, these, I'm telling you, these were open. Maybe maybe it's because I'm closing tabs. I wonder if that's what's happening. I won't close tabs. Legends of Void from two, two Oid Games. This is one that looked intriguing. It didn't end up backing myself. First time creator and didn't see enough to know if it, if it was good or not, but it very much looked good. It looked very solid either way. Cellulose, a plant, plant cell biology game from, from Genius Games. These, I have um, uh, Genotype. I have Genotype from them, I believe it's called. Very much looking forward to diving into that one. They generally produce uh, educational games that are also giving you a, a solid gameplay at the same time. This is Cellulose, like one of the third or fourth games. They have a bunch of them. We have Transmissions from Adam West, a Rondell style game as you try to deal with the degree of set collection as these robots move around the board. Very cute robots, very accessible gameplay. Connecting Flights from Bazak Games. Connecting Flights is a game that you can play solo, you can play competitive. You're basically trying to create these flights. You're trying to create these sequences of this flight goes to there, this flight goes to there, and then you're building up these airports, these airlines, these passengers. You're acquiring it all with the goal of trying to get as many people across the table as fast as you can. Then we have Game Toppers 3.0. More Game Toppers. This is a board game adjacent, like the Lax Racks. This is giving you Game Toppers, Game Legs to your Game Toppers if you want that, Game Mats if you want that, Mat Racks if you want that, all those kinds of stuff. We have Station Fall from Iron Game Design. Station Fall giving you the incredible incredibly thinky gameplay. I've heard a lot of good things from people who play this one. I'm still compelled by this one. I didn't back it, but very compelled by it. We have Dice Theme Park, the spiritual successor to Dice Hospital, giving you the same general core concepts while introducing new ones like cascading dice, dice that slowly move around the park as you activate them. Very intrigued from Alley Cat Games. We have Castle Panic Deluxe Edition from Fireside Games, in case you wanted to dive into the most deluxified version of Castle Panic you've ever seen. Well, this this is that. This is Castle Panic the Deluxe Edition, giving you just tons of plastic for your Castle Panic experience. Then we have Paper Advent Paperback Adventures, one I'm very looking forward to from Tim Fowers. I tried Paperback, I liked it, didn't keep it. I tried Hardback, I liked it, I didn't keep it. I think Paperback Adventures solves that problem because it's a solo game, which means I can take the three and a half hours I need to think of that perfect word. Like in Wordle, I take three and a half hours to figure out the perfect word in Wordle, and other people don't have to wait because it's a solo game. Solo word games are the best word games, in my opinion. Then we have Maximum Maximum Wild, Maximum Apocalypse Wasted Wilds from Rock Manor Games, bringing you more Maximum Apocalypse to your to your table. Then we have Path of, Sha Path of Light and Shadow Solstice from Stronghold Games. This is an expansion to Path of Light and Shadow that's been out a long time ago. They finally brought an expansion to the table. This is a deck building game with moving around the map. Lots of fun things going on as you build out your characters in this game system. 
Then we have The Witcher Old World from Go On Board. Phenomenal game. Really enjoyed this one. Very much looking forward to this one delivering. It might be a while. I wonder. When does it say? Since June 2022. I wonder if they'll hit that, they'll hit that timeline. Very much hope they do because I, I, I want the game selfishly. Then we have Keystone North America giving you the same puzzly style mechanism you've seen in games like Canvas and games like uh, Cal Calico, Cascade, any of those systems or a dozen other games that aren't coming to mind giving you just the tons of try to place this and place this and do this but all these things have different scoring conditions and you're trying to optimize your score around it. We have Robocrust Arena. The Robocrust Arena from from, from Wise Wizard Games, uh, bringing you just deck building arena combat for, for your robots. Lots of fun, lots of uh, just, you know, little arena combat. Just just fun, silly, beat em up uh, robot combat. We have Mechanical Beast. Mechanical Beast from Side Room Games, bringing you a solo and, well, one to four player game as you try to figure out how to control the beast that is unraveling around you as you rotate rooms and manipulate things in ways that will, will help you in the game. Then we have Follow the Mountain King. Follow the Mountain King from Burnt Island Games, another game that I'm sure will enter my top 100. A solid, solid game that brings you area control, uh, powers and ability from the various trolls, lots of fun things to do as you try to min-max your way through the experience, letting the, the, the gnomes invade the tunnels when beneficial, and also stopping them when you can as well. We have War Room, War Room, the second edition of this game from Larry Harris. This is a long game, this is a commitment, but supposedly it's one of the better war games out there that you can buy, still available to late pledge. We have Deliverance, a game of angels, demons, and the saints caught between, bringing you a little bit of a dungeon crawl-esque style gameplay, but along with a theme that we don't typically see as much in board games, uh, angels, deliverance, demons, all that stuff together but well rated from those who have played it who, do, who dived into it we have Four Humors another game from Adam's Apple Games and a solid game really enjoyed this one it's got like hidden worker placement a little bit of Prisoner's Dilemma it's fun it's simple it's thinky really enjoy the, the game Four Humors we have Six Siege an excellent game from Mythic Games Mythic Games has three on here already which does say something but Mythic, Mythic Games Six Siege is a phenomenal uh, tactical head-to-head -head experience you can play it in teams as well but I think of it as a skirmish game a two-player head-to-head skirmish game powers and abilities lots of ways to, to do stuff. I really, really enjoyed Six Siege and looking forward to the final game. We have Valor and Villainy. Ludwig's Labyrinth, a game that I'm even more excited to talk about because I've talked to um, One Stop Co-op Shop, who, not talked to, I've seen One Stop Co-op Shop's video where he apparently loves this game. I only had a chance to play a single game of Valor and Villainy, so I only briefly dived into it. I did a first impressions video, but I didn't have a t chance to fully dive into this one. I, had, I played the original, and I'm very excited for Ludwig's Labyrinth now because apparently he's been playing it non-stop, which just, it, it bodes well. It bodes well. I already enjoyed the game, don't get me wrong, but he's like really gone into it, and I just scratched the surface. Then we have Coalitions. Coalitions from Phalanx Games, a bunch of, uh, I don't even know this game was. I mean, I covered it briefly, but a long time ago, and I don't remember the details around it. Lastly, we have Force of Pangaea, the last of the 100 games that we've covered today. Way too many. Probably should cut these down, but... If you want all the late pledges, they are here. And this is we with me cutting out like 30 or 40 other late pledges just to keep it down to a manageable number of 100 total games. We'll be back in three to five months, whenever it is, to go over the newest batch of late pledges and all the other things you can back. Until then, you can find me here every Monday with more Kickstarter games and more crowdfunding things, although tomorrow is actually a look back instead of a look forward. So I guess consider this your temptation of the week, and we'll, we'll come back in a week from now to talk about things like La Grania and... What else launched this week? I feel a lot of games launched this week, but I can't remember them all. Lagrania, Deluxe, bo Big Box Edition, and all the other stuff that have since launched, launched this past week. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you didn't spend too much money. And as always, have a good one.